Jules, we not done? Because we got more quick yes. hits. Manchester City beat Luton 5-1 to go top of the league as Rodri finally gets his much-needed rest. Jules, <laughs> the goals might have come late, but this game was so yeah, one-sided. Yeah, one-sided. But, but credit to Luton as well for keep going. They scored a nice goal by Barkley. Lovely step over, finish. They hit the bar as well. They kept going, which, but they were never going to win away at the Etihad. They weren't, they? but then you feel that until the Kovacic goal goes in. Like, yeah, maybe. The bomb got a little less squeaky to use a Ferguson. Lovely goal by um, Kovacic, by the way. Great volley. Uh, great goal by Doku. Gvardiol again on his right foot. I don't know what's going on with Gvardiol. Uh, Erling Haaland with... The penalty goal, but he will take that. Oh, you're not going to give him credit for the for Hashimoto the own goal? Or... <laughs> I mean, one of the best home goals you will see this season. For sure, Foden rested as well. You don't need Foden and Rodri to be Luton at home, no. so Wait, well done. Can I say something about Luton? Um, just two quick things. One is 12 players out for this game, yeah. which for a team like Luton especially makes, yeah, 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 makes yeah. a ton of difference. That's true. Uh, That's true. And the other thing is, Kabori doesn't play because in, if, in, in the Premier League, if you're on loan, you're not allowed to play against your parent club. Yeah. This is a stupid, stupid, stupid rule, which I think only exists here. Just get rid of it. It's so dumb. Yeah, it it's is. so dumb. It is. Manchester United draw 2 2 at Bournemouth as Bruno Fernandes scores two goals and Eric Ten Hag. Uh, afterwards, he said, Well, we didn't deserve more than a draw. Jules, I agree. You agree with, uh, I, I assume you agree with your Dutch friend for once. Okay, so he said that. He also said a lot of other nonsense, completely in denial by saying, yeah, it was great. There was a lot of positives because this, because that. Oh, and I'm come like, come on, on focus please. on the part where you agree with him. Please. The, the, the Clover goal for Bournemouth, the second goal, the, the Bournemouth player from Senesi, they're literally walking into the United half to the goal. Like, I mean, I, I don't know, Garnacho is mean? doing... They are. They were structurally so bad. I mean, to be to take off Garnacho at halftime, I think because he was not defending at all uh, on Kerker is, is probably the biggest thing in this game. They just, they just, it's not good enough. That's all. Again, it's an incredible gap. But United, to continue on them, have considered more shots than anybody else in the Premier League this season. And only Luton and Sheffield United are worse when it comes down to expected goals conceded. Is it all down to the injuries at the back? No. No, no it's, not. it's not, funnily enough. I, no, because they weren't great last year either. They, they finished third last year, and yet um, they, 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 they were ninth in, uh, in shots conceded, uh, and they were seventh in expected goals conceded, which, you know, isn't great for a team that finishes third. No. There, there is clearly a structural issue. Now, is it a big mitigating factor that you've had to play Maguire and so on, and mention Lisandro Martinez out and Sean and Varane out and blah, 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 blah. Of course. But like you said, there is a structural issue. Massive. And I think if 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 I were a Glazer or Ratcliffe, I would go to Van Hal and tell him, listen, Ten explain Hag. to me. Sorry, Van Hal. Yeah, close enough. Ten Hag. I would say, explain <laughs> to me how you're going to fix it because this will decide whether you stay. But he's season. not. Get rid of him. He's not going to fix anything. Newcastle, despite their many injuries, destroyed Tottenham 4 0. And uh, Ange Postacoglu says he's concerned when he asked him what concerns you, he says, like, everything. Yeah, yeah. Remember, we talked after the Fulham defeat, the Spurs had a way uh, where they didn't show up and he was cross, Hominson was cross as well. And we said they're starting to be a bit predictable now and they have to be careful that those kind of games don't happen too, many of, too, too often now between now and the end of the season. Otherwise, they're going to miss out on. Champions League, top five, you know, whatever. I mean, this was worse than the Fulham defeat. <coughs> Credit to, to Eddie Howe and Newcastle to go back three, to wait them. I think they had 27% possession of the ball. They destroyed them. And it could have more than four, to be fair. And there was nothing from a, from a Spurs point of view. Taking off Son after 57 minutes for Ange, big decision. He was clearly not happy. Madison should have been sent off. It was, it was the a, second straight game where yeah. Madison should have been sent off. It's, it's like, I don't know. It's, I think it's really, really bad right now. And yeah, they're okay because behind them, <laughs> they're 10 points behind Newcastle and United as well. So, but And they have a game in hand. Yeah, exactly. Jules, we're getting semi-automatic hey! outside of the Premier League next season. Although not at the start of the season. No, because cause why? So they voted too late, so it can't be ready. I didn't know that. Oh, Supply bad. chain issues, straight of Hormuz, who knows? So, um, so it's going to come after the first international break. But are you excited? I am very happy. I don't know if he will sort out all the problems, but certainly all those dodgy incidents where the lines were strong, <laughs> the line was drawn by some douchebag on the wrong side or the wrong place or diagonal. 
There won't be any it's of not. that. They're drawn by referees. They're drawn by referees in the VR box. Who yeah, presumably who, who clearly are, are no good in geometry. Well, no, but, <laughs> but, but that's not their job. Like, you can't have somebody yeah, reward him his entire enough. career for being a good referee. I know, but how then, hard is it to draw a line normal, like like a straight line, for example? Obviously, it's something that the computer True. does better. None of that anymore. So I, I'm happy. He works well in the Champions yeah. League, I think. So hopefully it will work well for them. Can I make a bold prediction about the commentary and the punditocracy and all the ex-players uh, littering on, the airwaves uh, who don't pay attention? As soon as they start showing those those graphics and diagram what we've seen with like the 3D images and it shows that somebody's yeah. like 0.2 millimeters offside, they're gonna start flipping out all over again. Uh, and they're gonna go, oh, you've got this daylight, blah, blah, I'm blah. Not sure. go, no, because Surely it's, 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 not. this is how they roll. It's it's it's, it's like that. I don't know. I, I know it's gonna happen. I think it's a good thing. They've come to accept, and weirdly, they all accept the goal decision system, right? Yeah. Uh, even though they, they don't sit there and be like, oh, point one. They accept whatever picture appears on the screen. It's like gospel. So it'd be the it's same. It's like God's come down from, from Mount Olympus. It'd be the same. All right, let's hope same. so. Chelsea kick off against Everton in a few hours on Monday night. But in the meantime, Gab, they filed their company accounts for 22-23, showing reduced losses of 90 million down from 121 the year before. So that's good, right? Yeah, good. very good. But this was also down to the sale of two hotels at Stamford Bridge for 77 million, which raised a few eyebrows. Yeah, it raised a few eyebrows because, you know, Chelsea are owned by Bluco. Yeah. And... Um, Who did they sell the hotel to? They sold it to something called Bluco 22 <laughs> Properties. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is a real estate. Don't laugh. I'm not. Okay. I, just, I didn't think it was allowed still to sell yourself <laughs> something for a lot of money. But you're, hey, you know. you're allowed to deal with a related party okay. if it's at fair market value. This, okay. is what, uh, this is what Chelsea contend. And they say that, look, um, I'm not an expert in the cost of hotel buildings in, uh, in Kensington, Chelsea, or indeed Fulham, because it's just across the border. Um, but they sold two large buildings with hotel rooms in them for a combined seventy-seven million, which, you know, seems like a reasonable yeah, price. It doesn't okay. seem crazy. Chelsea said they had them independently evaluated. They say they asked the Premier League, "Hey, can we do this?" Um, you know, it, and again, people say, "Well, what, what's different about you guys losing your minds over Man City and Paris Saint-Germain and their sponsorships?" Well, the difference is here. I take Paris Saint Germain as an example. Yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, their 120 million uh, sponsorship with Qatar. Uh, here they're selling something real. Yes. A hotel. Yes. Which is a tangible asset, and they have independent yeah. people valuing it. 120 million to sponsor the C Qatar Tourist Authority. Right, exposure. <laughs> yeah, tremendous, right? right? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that's a difference, right? And it comes down to whether you believe it or not. I, for me, so the Swiss Swiss Ramble, who is the goat of financial of bloggers, he says it was necessary to comply with profit sustainability rules. He says they come very, very close. What I thought was interesting buried in here is the year of madness, his first season um, when they had Tuchel and Graham Potter yeah. uh, and uh, Frank Lampard. Oh, my God. It ended up... <laughs> It ended up costing them forty six million that between compensation nice. to Brighton, payoff for Potter, and payoff for Tuchel. Um, now they included this in the wages, so their wages actually shot up from three hundred forty million to more than four hundred million. Remember wow. they said yeah, yeah. the wages. I I suspect they included this stuff in the wages so that because obviously it's not going to be there next season unless they decide to sack Pochettino and give him a of 50 course. million payoff, uh, rather than exceptional items, so they can show how their wages are going back down again from yeah. 400 million. Maybe it's that, I don't know. Their operating losses. Now, again, there's the actual losses, which are, uh, uh, that, that a football club makes, which, is, which includes player trading, and because of amortization and so on, normally the actual losses are always, the, the, your books are, are much better with... Yeah actual stuff than operating losses. But operating losses is just money you take in, money goes out. They lost $249 million, which is the highest ever recorded. Now, I should say that in the Premier League as a whole, only one team, Brentford, recorded a profit in, in operating losses. Yeah, so it's not the last season. So most teams lose money. a lot of money. But they don't lose a quarter of a billion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I very, very uphill, I think, They uh, have to sell Chelsea. in January then, in uh, June. I think we know that. I mean, they'll get some money back for, for, for Lewis Hall, yeah, we said. Madison. If they want to sell Matson, they'll get some money back. And, you know, that'll help because they think they count as economy products. But still, um, it, it's good. not a good jumping not off good. point. Yeah, not a good look.